Well, it started out, what, Friday morning? Did you? Sa Fri Saturday morning, 2 a.m. Yeah. Was like my first, um, now looking back, it was my first contraction. I didn't know then that that's what it was. You want me to take it? No, looking back, that was my first contraction, but I didn't know that I should have because I remember it vividly. It woke me out of sleep and I literally rolled out of bed on my hands and knees on the floor and I just played through it. And I was kind of like, oh, that was a little weird. <laughs> but I mean, I got up, got something to drink, got a little bit of sleep, and went back to bed. And then um, that morning, my mom was about ready. And um, I'm just going to tell the first part, and then you can tell the rest because I don't remember a lot of it. But um, <laughs> so that morning, my mom and I went for a walk. And we were gone two and a half hours. And that wasn't a major walk. Okay. It wasn't a major walk, but like, I just remember. Warm. It was right around Thanksgiving, so a lot of people were putting Christmas lights up. So we went to the next neighborhood and we were walking around, just looking at all the different houses and things like that. And I had a couple contractions then, but I didn't really want to say anything because I thought, oh, this can't be it. Learn from my mistake. <laughs> but, um, so we went home, showered, went to Ikea that afternoon, spent a couple hours there. And that's when I was like, I had to stop a couple times in my tracks because I was having a contraction. And that's when I kind of like said to my mom, something's going on, but I didn't say anything to me yet. And then uh, when we were in the truck to drive home, I had four contractions and that's when I started timing it because I was staring at the clock in the truck and they were about 12 minutes apart. So that's when I decided to say something to him and like, oh, this might be something serious. Um, our dealer came over that night about what, 10 o'clock. Uh, Taylor got there about 10 o'clock. And then um, by then they were like six minutes apart. It just slowly, well, not slowly. Four o'clock, they were like 12 minutes apart. And then it got to be like two minutes. And then six minutes. And then two and three, so like three days long. <laughs> so. so Taylor got there, yeah, about 10 o'clock. Um, that first night was probably a long, long, long night for her. Um, every couple minutes, you know, counting down, uh, you know, that was the biggest thing that she wanted was counting. You know, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, I'm 45 sure seconds. Christina's and Bruce have taught you that, like, count through the contraction. That was my lifesaver. Because, like, I knew it wouldn't be more than 60 seconds, and if I could just hear how far I was into it, that's what got me through. So, I don't know, maybe that'll help you guys, but that was, I mean, for three days I think he counted. And when he didn't, I hit him. <laughs> I'm like, count my contraction! <laughs> yeah, so five minutes in between and then counting. You could, you could tell that was a long time. Oh, you had such a rough job. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was like, oh, if this is as worse as it gets, then uh, it's not that bad. <laughs> and, uh, first night we tried everything from um, shower, sitting on the ball, pelvic rocks, everything that you can think of, and then Sunday morning we went in the first time. Because they were about two or three minutes apart. Yeah, we went in about six o'clock. And um, we were, what, three, three centimeters? Mm -hmm. So three centimeters, not uh, zero gestation, or minus two gestation. Station? Yeah, mm -hmm. as high okay. as it could be, not mm -hmm. dropped anything. Um, still had a mucus plug and everything. Water hadn't broke. So we decided to stick around there for about an hour and walked around, uh, did some uh, sitting on the ball and stuff. And then after an hour, they're like, okay, well, we can give you either this pain medicine, let you go home, take a nap, you know, or we could put you in now. So we're like, no, we'll just. Or I could just go home and take Benadryl, which would help me kind of sleep. And it didn't need I did for about an hour. So <laughs> everyone got about an hour nap. <laughs> and then uh, ate something, you know, and uh, started it over again, you know, pelvic rocks, walking, not not a lot of walking, she didn't like to walk, it hurt too much, so did a lot of pelvic rocks, ball, um, and shower, it was two or three in the morning, so you figure from, on Monday, getting back mm -hmm. Sunday, or yeah, Sunday morning at about seven, and then going back in at 2 o'clock that night and with only like an hour of sleep. So she was just, she was a champ though. She did good.
<laughs> but she, you could tell she was tired. So we decided to do the gels. That was the first thing. Well, because you got back in what station or what Same. dilation? Same. Same. So still back. three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all that stuff. Um, you know, just progressing through it. But uh, we started with the gels. And then we had her break her water. So that was shortly after the gels. Maybe like two hours or three hours after the gels. Um, broke the water. Waited a little while. Actually, yeah, we did break the water first because we tried that to see if that would help the baby come down. Yeah. That's right. Before doing it, yeah. So and then we waited like three hours and then she was still, she was only at like four centimeters. Still, you know, um, as high as she could be. Just her hips weren't opening up at all. Uh, we decided to, or no, seven o'clock, it was right at shift change. So we decided to do the epidural and the toaster. And took a nap for about five hours. We all were out. I woke up and she still wasn't that far along. Well, she was about five centimeters, six, six centimeters. I was six. Yeah, but still didn't uh, drop at all. Drop. The baby was still negative too. So they said, okay, well, we can either wait or we can just get this over with. Chances are she's not going to drop, she's too big. So we, what was it? Like? I think Janice also inserted something to, um, oh, yes. it was on top of her head to like measure the strength yeah. of the contraction um, to see how, like, she could tell from the monitor how, mm -hmm. like, but it was something about internal to see if mm -hmm. I was even contracting hard enough to push the baby out. Mm -hmm. But, and it wasn't. And that's kind of mm -hmm. when she just felt that the baby was probably too big and was not going to come out. It was, she felt, the reason why he was, she was negative too was because her shoulders were hitting. Mm -hmm. And I just wasn't, um, I wasn't, uh, she just wasn't going to fit. Yeah, just, I guess. My turning point was when she told me that, because um, looking back, like I thank God that Tinsley did so well during that whole time. Because that's a long time to be in labor and not to be stressed out for the baby. But um, I think my turning point was um, when she said, you know, the baby's handling it well right now. The baby's handling it well right now. We can either do the cesarean right now where it's not an emergency and we can take our time, or I think... Because she, she offered to let me go and keep going, but she said, I think in the long run, you're still going to end up with a cesarean, and what I'm afraid of is that the baby is going to finally get stressed out, and then it's going to be an emergency. And when she told me that she, I mean, I know I shouldn't have, but at that point, I was just like, I don't want to say I gave up, but I guess I just felt like maybe it really wasn't going to happen, so I just said, let's do it now, and so they whisked me away, and Cut me open and took her out. <laughs> so, wasn't my ideal outcome, but like you said, healthy mom, healthy baby. Did the surgery work then? In the surgery? Mm -hmm. For the surgery? Yeah, they actually let me stand up and watch her come out. I could not believe that. <laughs> I didn't think they let them watch her mm -hmm. come out. I thought, like, once they get her out, then mm -hmm. they say, look over the curtain. Because, mm -hmm. like, no, I saw her. Them but you can't. Out. How they have it is they have a donut. That goes in around the, or on the skin, so that way you can't really see inside. Mm -hmm. And so you see the midwife up here and the doctor down here, and the midwife's just shoving her elbow into her stomach. I wondered why I was in so much out. pain. My ribs were in so much pain afterwards, and he's like, "Well, uh, Janice was had her elbows on. He's shoving her out." And I'm like, oh. And how she shot out is just like what you see in the videos, like a regular bed. So, comes in and then everything else. And then as soon as she came out, she decided to go to the bathroom. So we knew that she... Her, her plumbing uh, worked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold air. Mm -hmm. And she had great coloring. Did it have no cone head or nothing? She wasn't down far enough. When she, uh, when she said, let's go to the C-section, what were your um, like additional options or choices you had to, like, was there a lot of 
additional things you have to say, well, this way or that way, or... Yeah. The, she told us that we could wait, which we thought about it, and it was just like, how much, how long it's been so far, we didn't want it to get stressful on the baby. Like, like I said, when she basically, and I hate saying that because I kind of feel like I gave in to what she wanted, but when she said, like, you know, I just think in the long run you're going to end up with a C-section, I just feel that her shoulders are hitting, she's too <coughs> she's not going to fit through, and thinking, like, now, you know, I, I shouldn't have, I, I think I should have waited a little bit longer, but... You know, I guess my thinking was I didn't want to get the baby stressed and then have to have an emergency C-section where, you know, there could have been more complications because they were stressing to get her out, you know. Mm -hmm. so, but at that point, there weren't any signs of stress. So. Christina mentioned before you came in something along um, about, was it double stitching, was it you said? Mm -hmm. That's so one I, thing that we learned. Uh, like. We did not have a birth plan for C-section at all. It was we, like that long. Yeah, that was not in the, you know, not allowed basically. You know, we thought that everything was going to go perfectly, have a baby 24 hours the other. And they did But that's one thing that we did put on there was double stitching, making sure that we could have a vaginal birth next time if we wanted it. Mm -hmm. I was going to see if I could change it on the bench. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you said that was what I was trying to ask. What, like, double stitching, single stitching, what other kinds of... Like when she said, okay, C-section, you were on that track, then what were some of the other choices you guys had to make? Like, um, you just said, uh, if possible, to put her on the breast, but it wasn't going to happen at that time. Um, also, they wanted to know, we wanted to know if I could cut the umbilical cord. Uh, um, what else? The double stitch was a big thing, and then just me being there. So, that was, I was sitting by her head the whole time. And uh, then, she, you know, they said that I could stand up, but I didn't even know that they would allow me to. So. Was the placenta removed as well? Yeah, the but they didn't. Uh, that was also another thing, the uterus being pulled out. We told them we did not want it being pulled out mm. because sometimes they do that. And uh, so they pulled out the placenta all at the same time. So but right as soon as the baby came out, they took her to mom's head so she could see her. Mm -hmm. And then me and her went over to wipe off the, uh, what is it? Uh, Vernix? Yeah, mm -hmm. right. She was getting sewn up. We went over to the nursery to give her a sign. Where are you guys birthed? Uh, me and the nurse. Where you had a doula as well? Huh? You had a doula? We did, but she was out with the mom and her both parents. So, yeah, she wasn't allowed to come in. It was just one person. So. Where are you guys birthed at? We have. Janice as well. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know, we're going to tour both hospitals to see. The Mercy Gilbert's real nice. It's, it's mm -hmm. like a hotel. And the rooms are nice and as they seem when they came in, they're like, wow, we have a closet. I mean, all of our stuff was nice in the corner. We had all the room. But, um, the hardest thing was after we had uh, Tinsley, she could not move at all. So I did everything, you know, any crying, any um, help breastfeeding, and everything. So. So you were able to breastfeed right when she was born? Not as soon as she was born. Just uh, once we got her cleaned up, so about probably 20 minutes later, after she got all sewn up, then we came back and uh, tried to breastfeed. But just her chest was so engorged that it was real hard for her to do it. So, um, the nurses were help, real helpful in that too, at least teaching us how to breastfeed and all that. So, uh, 